Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 16th of August 2018 and we're continuing with our comments as to why gold and silver prices have crashed this week. We pointed out yesterday that gold fell to $1,187 and silver to $14.89 and highlighted that while we thought there may be a temporary rise from these levels, the trend would still be down. Well, in the last 24 hours, we've seen gold dip as low as 11.61 and has recovered slightly to 11.76. And silver dipped to 14.37 and it too has recovered slightly to 14.68. But both levels are lower than they were when we re reported. Since then, there have been many comments by subscribers and we shall attempt to deal with as many as we can. But we are a little disheartened by the few who still claim, ah, this is manipulation, it's JP Morgan rigging the system. Our answer to this is an emphatic, no, it's not. Now, whether you believe us or not, frankly, in the overall scheme of things really doesn't matter. The world won't change if you believe us and it won't change if you don't. But something many of our supporters acknowledge, and certainly those who have been with us from the beginning, is that bearing in mind how many predictions we give, we are seldom wrong, and when we are, it's by a very small margin. Yet what we cannot understand, and probably never will, is that these people, or in some cases conspiracy theorists, will follow the likes of David Morgan, who has over the past 10 years consistently got his forecast wrong by many tens of percent, the likes of Mike Maloney and Jim Rickards, who have persistently quoted $100,000 gold and around $600 silver, and Bix Weir, the most outlandish of them all, giving his, what we call, prediction while high on juice, $100,000 silver. And these guys have many tens of thousands of followers and subscribers, and they so far have probably only ever been right once in their entire public lives. Now we accept that some of them produce much more fancy videos and charts than we do, but we are old school who have always thought that the quality of the advice was more important than the presentation. But we are rapidly reaching the conclusion that we are wrong. Anyway, enough of our self-indulgent rant. The reason that our predictions and forecasts are usually accurate is not that we have a crystal ball. If we did, frankly, we would look up the next lottery numbers, win the jackpot and spend the rest of our time on a utopian beach somewhere, or cruise permanently around the world and probably never look at YouTube though perhaps we may have a sneak peek now and again. The reasons we are generally on the button, so to speak, are as follows. One, we don't allow our emotions or prejudices to dictate our conclusions or cloud our judgment. Two, we look at both technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Three, we factor in geopolitical as well as political factors. Four, we have a long background both in banking and economics and so understand to a considerable depth how central banks, treasuries and the investment community works. And five, we quote the opposite of Mike Maloney or David Morgan. No, only kidding with that one. And five, because we also look at trends, economic, social, technological and competitive. So going back to the purpose of this video, why have gold and silver prices crashed? Well, yesterday we said primarily it was the strength of the US dollar. We still hold to this. However, it's not just that alone. And in any case, why has the US dollar risen so sharply? Well, three words. Turkey, Argentina and China. OK, we attempt to keep our videos as close to 10 minutes as possible and not to overcomplicate them. So here is a very brief synopsis. One, the Turkish economy is in a mess and its currency, the lira, is in freefall. Its inflation rate is reported to be 101 percent and President Erdogan is unwilling to raise interest rates. In fact, he told his people to sell US dollars and their gold to support the lira.
Meanwhile, the US has increased tariffs on Turkey, therefore plunging their economy into an even greater mess. Two, Argentina has just raised its interest rates to 40%. The central bank has raised interest rates for the third time in eight days as the country's currency, the peso, continues to fall sharply. The after-effects of the 2008 World Economic Recession resulted in the US adopting a major quantitative easing program. Much of this money went into assets which are now bubbling, the equity market, bonds and to some extent property. An additional repository for these monies were what are known as carry trades. What this means is that an international speculator could borrow at lower interest rates in one currency to invest at higher rates in another. This was certainly seen in Argentina. In 2017, the Argentine state was able to issue a 100-year bond of 2.75 billion US dollars. Countries such as Argentina and other so-called emerging markets became dependent on this flow of foreign investments to avoid the crisis. In other words, Argentina became dependent on cheap international credit. Argentina's budget deficit in 2015 stood at 5.4% of GDP, and external debt as a percentage of GDP in Argentina increased from 25.5% in 2013 to 36.7% in 2017. The potentially faltering world economy, and especially the slowdown in emerging markets, have caused these chickens to come home to roost. 3. China China's renminbi has been hit by trade and economic woes. At 6.8 to the dollar, it's at the weakest level in a year, reflecting slower growth and tighter credit. On the surface, China's economy is moving along smoothly. The Chinese government recently reported that the economy grew 6.7% in the three months that ended in June, compared with a year ago. That is pretty close to the rate that China has reported quarter after quarter over the past two and a half years. The pace puts it comfortably within its target of achieving growth of around 6.5% for the full year. Those figures belie warning signs elsewhere. More detailed data showing weakening investment in infrastructure and less exuberant spending by China's consumers. Private businesses complain that government efforts to tame debt have made it hard for them to borrow money. A tiny but growing number of Chinese companies have defaulted on their loans. The currency has lost some of its value and Chinese stocks are in bear market territory. To add to its woes, the United States has started a trade conflict with China, and by this autumn it could widen the conflict by hitting another $200 billion in Chinese goods with tariffs. While the Chinese have made progress diversifying their economy, the country still relies heavily on making and exporting toys, clothes, car parts and other goods to the United States and elsewhere. So these three factors alone, notwithstanding other factors which play normally, have been the main cause for the rise in the dollar. How? Because people involved with these currencies have been moving out and into the US dollar, which for now is seen as a safe haven. This consequentially has had its effect on the gold and silver price. Now we haven't even factored in the fact that should world economies falter, and especially China's, the monies available to buy silver for production will fall, and so demand for silver will fall, and the available money available to purchase gold for investment purposes, especially by the general public, will also decline. We then begin to enter into Harry Dent's territory of $800 or even $600 gold and $5 silver. Now, whilst we do not believe from our analysis that things will get this bad, we have to factor that possibility 
in mind. And this is why we have been pessimistic on both gold and silver for some time, as we follow these factors. Notwithstanding this, it does look as if China and America will come to the table at some early stage and sort out these tariffs. But if they do not, then this could have quite a profound effect on the world economy. There is another important factor to bear in mind, and this is one we as ex-bankers have particularly focused on. The Fed has now technically stopped its quantitative easing and has begun raising interest rates and is providing a very tight monetary policy regime. This is inhibiting the availability of credit in the economy and is squeezing the potential for further economic growth. We have a situation where M4, a measurement of money supply, is around 4.8% and GDP is around 4% or slightly over, meaning inflation is close to just 1%. This suggests that monetary policy may in fact be too tight. This may, however, cause the Fed not to raise interest rates until December, rather than the expected rise in September, which could prove positive for gold and silver in the autumn. But as things stand, the pressure is still definitely downwards for gold and silver prices. We thought we would share this with you and help you understand some of our assessment techniques and concerns. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative and if so please give it a thumbs up and share it on Twitter. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com and if you haven't already done so please subscribe as a free member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.